Dana White is stressed, he's angry, and he's evil again. The return of evil Dana White took place at the post-fight press conference of UFC 304, just after Bilal Muhammad had beat Leon Edwards for the Welterweight World Championship. I don't know if those things are linked, but Dana White was in rare form in this post-fight press conference. He said no more extra bonuses for fighters. He glazed John Jones yet again and de-promoted Tom Aspinall. He then went on to de-promote Alex Pereira as well for no reason. He snapped at a reporter at the end of this as well. He snapped at another reporter in the middle of this too for suggesting that maybe Pereira should move up to heavyweight. This dude is mad. And I don't know why. Maybe it is because Bilal won the belt. I doubt it because he's been mad for the past few weeks. I think this guy is mad that people are going at his poor little John Jones. Okay? His little pooky bear John. I think he's very annoyed about that. And it's starting to sort of build up a lot of pressure for him. So uh, let's have a little listen to some of the things that he said about UFC 304 in general. Because he was rage filled. Uh, Dana, good morning. Good morning. Uh, Bilal Mohamed's new welterweight champion. Curious your thoughts on the main event, on his performance, and Leon Edwards' performance. Um, wasn't a barn burner. When Dana White smiles with those eyes, there is never a time when he is filled with more rage. Okay, now Dana White has watched many a John Jones main event with Thiago Santos, with Anthony Smith, with many others that he's had boring fights with. Not, no point did he immediately shut it down as not a barn burner. We've seen responses when Dana White, like Israel Adesanya, you know, just one of those nights where it was just weird, you know, like it just went weird. And all of a sudden Adesanya had another boring performance, I guess. Uh, what can he do? You know, it takes two to tango and it was all on his opponent. We've heard this from Dana White. We've heard him cover for fighters that had boring fights. No cover for Bilal Mohamed. Wasn't a barn burner. He's right. But I'm glad that we've got this Dana White back. Because when Adesanya was champ, when Jones was champ, which ended at UFC 304, he's no longer champ. When those guys were champ, Dana was all of a sudden having to sort of let things slide and not say the wrong things all of a sudden and make sure that he doesn't say anything bad about them whatsoever, no matter how fucking boring they are. But now... We're getting the old Dana White back where he's going to say this shit was boring. And that's all he's going to say about Bilal's performance. Yeah. Do you think maybe Leon kind of, to me, looks... So that's the full answer that he gave. What did you think about the performance in the main event by Bilal? Wasn't a barn burner. That's all he had to say about Bilal Mohammed's main event. In interesting stuff. It's a little bit lethargic. Maybe the time was hurting him a bit more than Bilal. Do you think that was a factor? Or Talking about Leon Edwards. Or do you think Bilal's pressure was just too much for him to overcome? I have no clue. Uh, I, you know, you're going to have to ask uh, Leon how he felt and what was going on. And, you know, um, Bilal, I, you know, I know Bilal's been training with uh, Habib. So his Immediately, I don't know what was going on with Edwards. We're back to this. This is what I like from Dana, man. This is what I like with Dana. Coping, seething. It's like seeing myself up there on that press conference. This is what we need. He just needs to hurl an insult at Bilal Muhammad for no reason. What did you think of uh, Bilal Muhammad's performance tonight, Dana? God, he's ugly. Anyway, next question. I think I just wish we had old Dana back. His, his uh, performance was, you know, what you would expect. You know, in the past, we've seen these dominant champions get an instant rematch. Do you think that might be the case here, or do you think it's better to just have Leon rest a little bit? And yeah, let him rest. But we're talking about other things right now. Okay. Quick! No, let's see how we feel about this. No, you know when Adesanya lost to Strickland? Well, we don't know yet if we're going to do an immediate rematch <laughs> for the second time in a row. He still got the rematch, but it wasn't against Strickland. It was against Stricker, so that's how they sort of made a loophole around it, but no, we've immediately decided Edwards will not be getting an immediate rematch. This is good. Uh, Tom Aspinall, one minute, got him out of there. I mean, kind of different from the main event, right? Just came in there and blew him off. Do you think... No Jones? That John Jones fight is getting bigger and bigger. 
Yeah. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. I mean, there's, there's no doubt whoever wins the fight between John Jones and Stipe. Very important to note. He said whoever wins at the, po- at the pre-fight press conference of UFC 304, he said Tom will be fighting the winner of Jones versus Miocic. He confirmed it. Now again, Dana White, what's your response? Will Tom be fighting the winner of uh, Jones versus uh, Miocic? The winner of Jones versus Miocic, Dana, is next for Tom Aspinall. Is that what you're about to say? Or is a great fight for Aspinall. He's walking it back. (laughs) He's walking it back because he realized he made a promise he can't keep and Jones is probably going to call it quits. He's that language change is very telling and the pause before it as well. There should be no pause. He's defended his interim belt. You're having the undisputed fight anyway. Surely Aspinall should be next. No doubt about it. I mean, there's, there's no doubt whoever wins the fight between John Jones and Stipe. Wait for it. Is a great fight for Aspinall. Is a great fight for, not will fight Aspinall, not is next for Tom Aspinall. It's a great fight for him. It's a great fight for him. Have you spoke to either of those two about that? Because I know both of them have said maybe this is their last one. Have you spoke to either of them to get their temperature? We won't, it doesn't even matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter if we've spoken to them and they've both said that they're not fighting after this. God, it doesn't even matter. Why are you bringing this up that we spoke to both of them and they both said they're retiring? It doesn't even matter, okay? Stop trying to diminish Jones Miocic. The only way this sells is if they think the winner is fighting Aspinall. <laughs> Stop diminishing Jones. That's all it is at Dana White's press conferences. Stop diminishing John Jones. Not my pookie John. What, whatever's going to happen when they fight is going to happen and, and we'll go from there. But as fans, we can all say, ooh, that's a fun fight, no matter who wins. Speaking of... Or we could say, ooh, let's make that fight, Dana. <laughs> but as fans, we can say, ooh, that's a fun fight. Like, no. Nah. You locked in before the event. You said, yep, to an answer of Will Tom, the winner of Blades Aspinall, to be fighting the winner of Jones Miocic. Yes, you said. And we all saw the face you pulled after you said yes. And I said, there's no way he believes that. He knows he's going to have to walk that back later. And here he is walking it back. John Jones, uh, the 12 to 6 elbow rule has been overturned. And there's some talk about he wanted his loss. To Matt Hamill overturned. Is that something you could even look into? And is that something you'd like to see? I've been trying to do that since it happened. So yeah. I think I wanted it more than he did. So it hasn't worked out too well though. No. But uh yeah, I've been I've been fighting for that for a long time. You had an incompetent uh referee, a guy who we can all agree now. Maybe I sounded like he's talking about Mazagati, I assume. We're walking, we're getting the overturned for a disqualifiable move from John Jones. I know he was talking about maybe trying to overturn it, and I've heard Joe Rogan talk about that as well, but now it's like, now they're changing the rule away from 12 to 6 and away from knees to a grounded opponent. We're going to have to change a lot of fight results, Dana, not just John Jones' one. Why just John Jones' one? There's so many fighters that have had their careers altered by having illegal moves that they've gone for that have got them disqualified. There are so many fighters like this. Are we going to go through every single one of their records, Dana, or are we just going to do this for John Jones? Your pookie bear. Huh? You know, an asshole back in the day, but now we can all look back and 100% say that a guy that was completely incompetent at a time when the Nevada State Athletic Commission was at its weakest. You know, the guy who was running it was a zero. Mazagati should have never been in there. And the list goes on and on. Uh, By the way, I want to point out here, yeah, that Jones did throw 12 to 6 elbows. I think the rule is bullshit, and I think it should be removed. However, Jones did throw illegal 12 to 6 elbows. So by calling the ref that called him on that and disqualified him for it, 
To call that ref incompetent means that your idea of his competence is to ignore the rules of MMA and let Jones use a disqualifiable move without disqualifying him. We all saw what he did. He saw John Jones go for an illegal move and he called him on it and he DQ'd him on it. Incompetence. Unbelievable. I agree the 12 to 6 elbow is bullshit. But if we start overturning John Jones's record because of it, all of a sudden, we're going to have to overturn a lot of fucking records. Okay? We are going to have to overturn a lot of records. Um, and Peter Yan's somewhere crying right now. Eventually, they're going to make it so that you can have one knee down and still get kneed. And Yan's going to be just fucking... Yep, yep, yep. That Leonardo DiCaprio meme at home. And that thing should have been and should be overturned. And I've been fighting for it for years. All right. Two more quick ones outside of... Tonight. Really, really fighting for it for John. For years. While he licks his lips. Anyway... Night. You know, every time you get on a press conference, the fighters manage to get you to up the bonuses. Do you think there's an argument? This is an interesting one. Now, remember, this fight took place with majority British people on the card, and they were fighting in fucking midnight to 5 a.m. None of them slept. Arnold Allen nearly crashed his car because he fell asleep at the wheel on the night of the fight. Aspinall didn't sleep for 22 hours, and Edwards didn't sleep either. Not saying that's a valid excuse for Edwards. However, it would maybe explain why some of the fights weren't that fun. Because you had these motherfuckers fighting at midnight. You go to Abu Dhabi, they fight at 5pm UK time. You come to the UK, you make them fight midnight onwards because you have no respect for the UK, even though we're crushing it in the sport right now. Name an Abu Dhabi fighter. Mohamed Yahya lost to Trevor Peak in his debut and nothing else. No other accomplishment at all. They get 5 p.m. The UK, we got a champ here, champ there. Top contender here, top contender there. Top five guy here, top 15 guy there. We don't get a good time zone. But remember, this is about the bonuses. The extra bonuses that were given out. And that maybe you should just up them. To I think tonight showed that we should not. No. Oh. He's back! Dana White's back! Shutting down the idea of upping the bonuses. Upping them doesn't change anything. It doesn't make anybody fight any harder. It doesn't, it doesn't change anything. I'm not doing this again. He's back! Evil Dana White's back! Destroying John Jones' legacy as a fan base that we have done has brought evil Dana White back. And it's good you can see life in his eyes yet again. Whatever that doctor was that told him he had like 10 years to live is now saying it's about 12. Because he's up to another two years onto that life expectancy. 100%. You can see the glimmer in his eye. There's literally a twinkle in his eye as he talks about withholding money from UFC fighters. He's so back. Back like he never left. I'm not doing it again. I'm not doing it again. He had John Jones' the pound for pound best kind of energy when he did that. Dude, it really perks him up. Taking money from fighters, glazing John Jones. This guy's got energy recently, man. And I'm all for it. <laughs> Completely deny accountability about them fighting at fucking 5 a.m. Completely deny and sort of wave off any accountability on your behalf. Blame the fighters entirely and never up the bonuses ever again. I agree, though. It's all, I do agree in a way, yeah, because it's always the fighters like, yeah, 100, 200, that never, never compete in that way whatsoever. Like, Bilal was cheering like he was going to get a bonus. You know what I mean? And Edwards actually mocked him for it. Didn't age well. All good, though. Ever. Ever. Today was the last, the last day that I'm doing that. Yeah. Not saying that in the future the bonuses couldn't get up, but I'm not going to be at a press conference and say, Two 200, 300, fucking never again. Yes, he's so back. He's so back. Be at a press conference and say, 200, 300, fucking never again. Mocking people with mental difficulty. Oh, he's so back like he never left. This is the Dana we've needed in this darkest hour. This is when Churchill went dark. You know what I mean? When he realized he needed, when he realized he needed to nut up and save us. You know what I'm saying? This is the kind of Dana I'm interested in hearing. Never again. So you, you can thank everybody on this card 
for that. When he does that big cheesy grin, you know he's angry when he does this shit. He loves that little grin that he does. He's furious inside. Damn, dude. Yeah. I, I Nobody that. fought any harder. There was no sense of urgency. Holy shit, I want the 100,000. Seven straight. Fu- Who gives a fuck? We do. The British fans do. Every fucking British fan does. About who gives a fuck. Who gives a fuck? But Dana White's so back. Fuck the English fan base. Fuck the UK. Let it fucking burn. As it's already happening. And let's not get too political. Let it continue to burn down. And who gives a fuck about the UK? I'm with you, Dana. (laughs) Fuck the whole UK fan base. Fuck every UFC fighter from the UK on the entire card. And fuck doing bonus. <laughs> He's so back. We needed, we needed something. We needed Dana White to take hold of the whip once more. Okay? He's been going light. You know? He's been giving Hunter Campbell a paddle to discipline these fighters with. Dana White, he's like, I don't know how to, I don't want to nerdily explain it in such a nerdy way. But like when Thanos gets the gauntlet on, I've never even seen the Avengers movie. I just saw that Iron Man died at the end and decided not to watch it. Um, but still, when he gets the gauntlet on, you know, that's Dana just, you know, his fucking hand really ergonomically fits into the grooves of the handle of the whip. Like I, I can imagine Dana White back on form right now, dude. This is the kind of attitude we need towards fighters. Fuck the whole UK fan base. Fuck every UK fighter from now on. Fuck the time zone. Who gives a fuck if the English fighters have to fight at 5 a.m.? The world champion of England has to fight at 5 a.m. Fans in the UK have to stay up until... Who gives a fuck, says Dana White. This is what I'm listening to. It's uh, fucking 7 o'clock in Vegas, so... Nonsense to bring up. Not the problem. It's uh, 7 o'clock in Vegas. That's how time zones work, mate. So you understand time zones then? Still decided to put on the event at midnight till 5 a.m. Whatever. Yeah. Never again. Okay, I lost. Seven straight fucking decisions. Yeah. The 100,000 was was, was a real big fucking woohoo. Let's get it, boys. Buck that shit. Never again. Okay. Removes all accountability, trashes the fighters, trashes the entire fan base in the UK. Fuck him, he says. Who gives a fuck about them? This is the Dana we needed. We move on to another moment here, though, which is at 7 minutes and 14 seconds, which I think is about the Mohamed Makayev thing. Do I even need to play the Mohamed Makayev thing? I'll play a bit of it. This is a guy that you'd want to bring back to the UFC because he said his contract is totally done now. Yeah, he is. He's, he's under contract. He's not, he's not under contract anymore. Okay. Uh, but you, would you be interested in, you know, keeping him around in the fall? I think the PFL is going to get a great undefeated guy. Really? Good luck to him. Boom! He's back! Dana's so back. 10.42, just kicking Makayev out. Fuck him. That's what I'm talking about, Dana. Fuck him, dude. Throwing us off the scent of the Dagestani bias, are we? Heard us calling out the Dagestani bias, so he's cutting Makayev, acting like we're going to lose. He's going to give us the slip. You know what I'm saying? Nice, dude. Just fuck him. Cut him from the whole fucking sport. There's, he said PFL's going to have a really good flyweight. He knows PFL has no flyweight division. This is the ruthlessness we've been missing. 10.42, another moment here in the press conference. Dana, just mentioning Tom Aspinall there, I know you mentioned that he has the potential to be the UK's best ever fighter, but Michael Bis... Arguably already is. ...being mentioned yesterday during a Q&A panel, he said he can see Tom going on to dominate the heavyweight division for years to come and go down as the greatest MMA fighter of all time. There's an opportunity there. Basically, what this reporter has done is he's laid up Dana and said, here's a chance to give yourself a bit of promotion to Tom Aspinall. Say, you know, Tom's got, you know, if he keeps it together and he keeps consistent, this guy could go down as one of the greatest of all time. We're seeing that from him because he's literally got the most dominant efficiency in any fighter in UFC history. And he's lowering his own record against title fighters. Tom Aspinall is lowering his own finisher fight time in UFC history against title contenders. He's lowering the average... (laughs) He's lowering his already lowest 
average finish time, finish time in UFC history against title contenders. Lay up for Dana White. Say that he's got potential to be the greatest of all time. Easy to do. You don't have to, you, he doesn't have to become the greatest of all time. You can just say, yeah, he's good. He's definitely got the potential. But we'll see if he's got the consistency as well, because that's a big thing, you know, injuries and stuff. But uh, skill for skill, this guy's looking like he's got a great future. Let's listen to what Dana says about it, though. Do you see him capable of achieving that? The, so. So. <laughs> so it, we don't like Tom Aspinall's. Just say maybe, like, we'll have to see how his career goes. What's this big pause and explanation of, like, so? Yes. I mean, th this guy, to, to, to put that on him right now, he obviously has the, the, the ability to, to, to dominate the heavyweight division. Okay, we got it. That's what I wanted him to say. What he did to Curtis Blades tonight, I mean, let's, let's be honest here. Curtis Blades is not a guy you walk right through. He walked through him tonight like it was nothing. So True. This is actually, we're getting the answer I wanted out of Dana White. We're somewhat promoting Tom Aspinall here. There's no doubt about that the guy's got the talent. Um, but when you start talking, he, he, he won this fight tonight. He could be the greatest of all time. Again, you know how I feel about John Jones. Never mind them. Uh, made it about John Jones quick. Had a chance to promote his current active, non-wife beating and PED cheating champ. Made it about John Jones. Oh, don't worry, Dana. We know how you feel about John Jones. A lot of us, no. We're on to you. <laughs> We're very much on to you, Dana. It's just, you, you, you got some big shoes to fill and you got a, a, a lot of people to wreck, you know, before you even start talking about even being in, within John Jones universe, in my opinion. This is the guy that was talking about Usman being above GSP, like two title defenses in. GSP never beat up women. GSP never PD cheated. This is the guy, the same guy that after Usman's like third defense was like, he's the greatest welterweight of all time. Israel Adesanya, when it came to Anderson Silva's record. I think like four defenses in. The greatest we've ever seen at middleweight. The greatest. He's got a real argument to be the greatest of all time. And then when it comes to John Jones, you know how I feel about John Jones. You just got laid up an opportunity to promote Tom Aspinall at an event where Tom Aspinall fought at, defending his interim belt and remaining champion. Massive potential star moving forwards. You've yapped about Jones again. Can't fucking help yourself. You gave him. We move on. <clears throat> 1255. There's more to this as well. He even gets really angry at the end. This is where he goes at a reporter. Watch this. From this card, Alex Pereira has been looming over the heavyweight division. He wants to move to the heavyweight division. and he's He hasn't been looming over the heavyweight division. People All right. Sorry. Sorry that could potentially look bad for Jones. That's literally the way this guy responds. How does this affect Jones? How does this affect the way people perceive Jones? He's not looming over the division, actually. It's a figure of fucking speech, Dana. It's a figure of speech, man. It's just like he's planning on moving up at some point and he's got it in his sights. He's not looming over it, all right? John Jones is looming over the division. John Jones is the only one looming over, okay? And I'm the only one looming over when I'm in his bed at night, all right? He's the only one looming, looming or over things around here. Crazy. People have been saying he should go to the division and... He hasn't been looming over the heavyweight division. Look how much that annoyed him. He hasn't been... <laughs> this is John Jones' division we're talking about. He's the fucking pound for pound... Sorry. People oh, have been saying he should go to the heavyweight division. He did call out the heavyweight champs he wanted to fight after UFC 300, I believe. And he's, he stepped up for you guys so much this year. Is that something that you'd love to see at some point? Maybe not necessarily the next fight for him. Of course. Of course. Alex Pereira at heavyweight in a gauntlet mode tournament between Tom Aspinall, John Jones, and Stipe Miocic. I mean, that would literally save the fucking sport right now. That would be epic. The four horsemen just going at each other. Pereira, Aspinall, Jones. Forget Miocic, he's an old man. But that trifecta of savagery. 
John Jones, Tom Aspinall, Alex Pereira, representing three different corners of the world. Most dangerous men on the planet. Of course you would like the idea. Even if you don't think Pereira is going to move up Dana White. This guy just said, you know, would you like to see Alex Pereira move up at some point for either his next fight or the one after that? This is a perfect opportunity to hype up the idea of Pereira moving to heavyweight. What does Dana White say? What, weren't we just talking about Tom Aspinall? We were no, actually, we tried, and then you started talking about John Jones. <laughs> but no, we weren't. We weren't. We tried to talk about Tom, and you made it about John Jones. Talking about Tom Aspinall, yeah. Greatest ever. So maybe Pereira versus Aspinall at some point. Just entertain the idea of Pereira moving up to heavyweight. For the love of God, you promoter of the sport, please entertain the idea of Alex Pereira moving up to heavyweight and getting these super fights. Set this, like, plant the seed right now here. You're getting given layups. Promoter of the sport. Powerful. Uh, agility, speed. He's talking about Tom Aspinall. So you think he should move up and you think he should fight Tom Aspinall? I mean... So he's just written off Pereira's shot against Aspinall. By the way, I do the same. This is the promoter of Alex Pereira. I know he's a promoter of the sport. He's a promoter of Alex Pereira. He's the promoter of Tom Aspinall. He's the promoter of John Jones. You think he should move up? You think that'd be good for him? I mean, I mean, I guess not, Dana. Maybe it wouldn't be fun, I guess. Maybe... I mean, way to ruin all my interest in that fight, Dana. I'm a casual fan, and I just heard you say that at a press conference. So, hey, maybe I don't know what I thought as a casual fan. And um, I guess I'm not interested in that fight anymore, promoter of both of them. Because you just said that one of them would destroy the other, and the other one isn't really looming over the division, and shouldn't even think about moving up. Uh, sorry, Dana, I didn't mean to have fun with matchups. I just a casual fan. I guess I'm not interested in Aspinall versus. This is the effect you're having on the casual fan base, Dana. The fans want to see it, Dana. Yeah. Do you want to see it? Well, I'm asking you. You think it's a good idea? Say yes. What are you doing? And this in, I bet you in any way, this leads back to somehow defending Jones. Because if you start talking about Pereira Aspinall, all of a sudden, Jones Miocic means th fucking nothing. I'm trying to pronounce my TH noises and I'm messing it up a lot because I'm doing it in place of F now for a lot of Fs that don't need to be THs. Either way, it's so annoying. And you know why they're doing this? Because if they make Aspinall Pereira now, nobody's going to be fucking giving a shit about Jones Miocic, are they? So he's writing off that, uh, sounds like that could overshadow uh, John Jones, <laughs> my gay lover. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm just going to, uh, I mean, would you like the idea of it? I mean, come on. I mean, it's just bullshit from Dana again. You're giving lay you're getting given layups just to say yes to. And boom, the promo is done. You can't even do that. Hey, we were just talking about how he's the Yeah, best. I think it's I think it's a good idea. I think Pereira wants to do it. Tom wants it. So I should John, move John Pereira up, it. a guy who's fucking superstar in that weight class and looks great and I think the fan He's angry. are you hearing his voice choke up? So you're telling me I should move a guy up a weight class? Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, actually, yeah, kind of. That's kind of what we've been doing in this sport over the past 10 years, Dana. It's kind of what we've been doing. It's kind of the thing that gets done when a guy defends his belt a few times. And you have a guy defending a fucking interim belt. It's kind of the perfect thing to do right now. So we don't keep Aspinall out for potentially another year to where maybe he won't even be returning after that because Jones might retire. You're telling me I should just move this guy up to another division above him? Are you afraid he might outdo Jones' legacy, are we, Dana? That's how it fucking feels. That's how it feels every time you answer a question about Aspinall or Pereira. <laughs> Fucking superstar in that weight class and looks great. And I think listen to the way his voice was chopped. Uh, superstar in that weight class. We never hear Dana speak like this. Guy who's fucking superstar in that weight class and looks great. And I think the he's holding back anger. That's what it is. Like, why are you fucking asking me about Pereira? Ask me about my gay lover Jones. That's what he wants to like come out with right now. I don't think he is gay lovers with Jones. I'm just making a, a guess. <laughs>
just a random guess. I'm playing a character. Fans are greedy and they like the idea of dream fights. I'm sure it's a dream fight that you've seen on the internet yourself. Of course you have, Dana. You've definitely seen the idea of Pereira Aspinal being looked forward to by a lot of fans and the potential idea of it. I mean, you got any more questions for me? That's a problem! I'm sure you've seen people are interested by the Aspinal Pereira fight online. You got any other fucking questions for me? Because that didn't sound like you were sucking Jones's cock. So you got any other fucking questions? And this one better be about sucking Jones's cock. <laughs> what is this guy? Why is that a problem, Dana? He's mad. He's angry. He's evil again. We've got Dana way. He's so back. I'm saying Jones moving up to heavyweight was the dream for a long time. We've got that. So I feel like that similar storyline is going to happen with Alex Pereira. So promote Alex Pereira and say that there's a chance. To eat. Imagine if he does. Dana White, this is your job as a promoter. I mean, I don't know if it's going to happen next. Ankalaev's right there as a contender. But hey, you never know. Maybe we do get that job done. And if he does pull it off, can you imagine how much legacy he would have? How much of a goat he would be? I mean, that would take him right up there to be in the GOAT conversation if he were to pull that off, a three-division title haul. Now's your chance to promote Alex Pereira. Well, you got Jones fighting Stipe. Whoever wins that, they fight Tom Aspinall. So they're fighting him now. So, they're f so that's why, Tom. Ah, so when you defend an interim belt, now you're just locked in for the title fight. Aspinall was not locked in for his title fight until he defended his interim belt. But Dana, who didn't say that that was next for Tom afterwards, earlier in this interview, has now said, you do that next. Okay, so now it's locked in. Now that the idea of Pereira Aspinall happening is a potential, now it's locked in. Now that's just got to be waited for. We just have to keep Aspinall out, guys. We can't possibly have Pereira Aspinall as the co-main event of Jones Miocic. Or on any other pay-per-view. Because I'm noticing how stacked those fucking pay-per-views are recently, Dana. Ooh, just couldn't possibly fit another heavyweight championship bout between Tom Aspinall and Alex Pereira on any of those, could we? Those are just stacked to the brim with Ode Osborne versus Daniel Rodriguez on the main card of a pay-per-view. No room for a heavyweight title matchup between Pereira and Aspinall, even though they probably both take it without asking for an extortionate amount of money. Let's be honest, they probably would just for the challenge. No, right off that idea, clearly the pay-per-views are far too stacked already. Can't wait to see which one Pennington headlines. You fucking bald evil cunt. But I'm glad you're back. Where does he fit into this There's right lot, now? There is a lot going on. There, there is a lot going on for you. I agree with that. Anybody else? Yeah, they, they <laughs> Dana's know. getting ratty. He's getting ratty. And then at the end, some guy tries to bamboozle him on a uh, Palestine thing. You know how these Palestinians are. Can't help it. Every chance they get. <laughs> Any comment section. There they are. You know what I mean? Rally and support. We get it. I'm joking. Uh, let it play, though. This guy just riles up Dana at the end. I like it, though. This guy did it well. He really got under Dana's skin before the end. Um, right before the main event, uh, Bilal Muhammad's corner put the Palestine flag behind him on the fence, and what it looked like from press row was they were told to put it down, so I was just wondering, because there were other flags shown throughout the night, if, that's, if that was kind of random or if that's a policy thing because of the war. <laughs> Conveniently doesn't hear. <laughs> the classic technique of Dana White. Bilal Muhammad's corner had the Palestine flag behind him and someone told them to put it down. So was that... <laughs> I'm not hearing this guy right now. This sounds like a tricky question. Random or is it like a... Pol what? What? Palestine flag? Bilal? I mean, come on, you guys. I, I don't know. The policy thing because of... He put a what? Palestine flag. <laughs> oh, Palestine flag and somebody said take it down? Who said take... <laughs> it's literally... <laughs> It's word for word the impression. I didn't even realize that. That's exactly what Palestine flag. Somebody said take it down. Who said that? <laughs> Classic Dana. He's so back. I listen to this as well. I'm about to show you body language 101 here. Yeah, about to show you body language 101. You ready for it? 
I'm going to answer who took the flag down. And I'm going to screenshot it. And I'm going to pause the screen in a way that's going to answer who asked the flag to be taken away from Bilal. Palestine flag. Oh, Palestine flag? And somebody said take it down? Who said take it down? <laughs> Dana did. <laughs> this motherfucker did on the screen right now. That's who, who asked to take it down. <laughs> like a dog that just ate your dinner. You know what I mean? Who asked to take it down? <laughs> he just hits this pose. It's this new Dana White emote that we've never seen before upon being asked if he asked a Palestine flag to be taken down. Crazy for... Who asked? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so obviously was Dana. Doesn't hear it twice. The classic Dana move. They're still asking though, so he can't... He hasn't given him the slip with that old trick. You know what I mean? The old don't hear it 3000. Classic in the Dana White household. Uh, and now he's just gone to, who took it down? And basically, what I can only describe as, has the most guilty body language I've ever seen in my fucking life. Somebody said take it down? Who said take it down? I don't know who it was, but it looked like it was someone from on the UFC, there was like two people just like telling them to don't put it, to don't put it on the fence. <laughs> Looked like there were people from UFC, were they wearing fucking UFC hats or uh, no, I mean, name they, tags? Otherwise or? I wouldn't have been right at the octagon. I, I guess, have no so. idea. But if there's, no no, idea. there's no like new flag policy thing because of anything. Or, I have no idea. I get what you're trying to do, but I have no idea. I was just wondering because... Yeah, 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 yeah. I know what you're trying to do. I know what you're trying to do. <laughs> good try. I don't fucking, I have no idea, but good try. You guys love to do that shit. <laughs> Have a good night. He's back! Dana White is so back, dude. This is as good as Trump hitting the fucking fist in the air with the American flag behind it, boys. Dana, look at that grin. He's about to fuck some fighter up in a negotiation after this one, boys. Oh, you want more money, Aljo? Hoosh, you're cut from the UFC. <laughs> you're cut from the UFC. Nice win over Evloev. You're both cut from the promotion. Ooh, Dana's fucking... He's about to go cut Cody Brandage after this. <laughs> after this one, boys. He's about to go give Cody Brandage his notice. He's been saving that one. You know he's been holding on to Cody Brandage's resignation papers. They, were, they are getting smacked into... <laughs> Straight into an envelope directed right to Cody Brandage's household after this one, boys. I can just see it in my mind right now. You know an unranked Dagestani's getting a title elimination bout after this one, boys. Can't wait for Ikram Aliskarov versus Cannon here. Ooh, it's going to be good. Ah, damn. That's the Dana we love to see. And he's off. Ready to ruin some lives. See you later, guys. Thank you for watching. Toodle Pip, I'll see you later. Goodbye. A really sus way to pause that at the end of the video. There you go. See you later. Goodbye.